All right, guys, we are going to be talking about you know what. Now, a lot of people have asked, hey, what's, what's going on over at T-Rex Arms? Is this some sort of April Fool's joke? You know, you're dropping all these products on your site. There's weird newsletters going out. You've got weird stories on your page. What, 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 what's going on? Well, if you've been over to the T-Rex Arms website at some point today because you are on the AC1 uh, uh, wait list or you've ordered plates in the past four months uh, or you're on our standard newsletter list, uh, which you should be on, uh, you will have gotten an email uh, stating some weird goings on with the AC1 and the launch of the AC Uno, a plate carrier where a small percentage of them were actually manufactured in another country without us knowing, and then some investigation had to take place, and then some things needed to get done, loose ends tied up, stuff like that. Um, so, to sum up everything that's going on right now, just so you know, this is not an April Fool's joke. It's all real. It's also all a one-time thing. So, I'm going to list off just right off the bat for you guys to know. There's four, four things in particular that is, that's going on today. We dropped L210 pricing 20% on our website. This is active for about a week until we're out of stock. We have a large quantity, uh, over 2,000 sets of L210s uh, that are on sale at 20% off. We dropped the 556 Placard, this product right here that we've been working on with STAC. Uh, it's a great product that can either be used as a chest rig with a standard harness from a company like Spiritus or Haley or uh, Velocity Systems. Uh, we've been using these now for a couple months on our AC1s, and there's some other things that we're working on for it, but it's a real simple uh, Kiwi system, uh, Kydex inserts, and it's Velcro on the front, so you can actually ditch the buckles entirely if you want to remove them, and you can run your cummerbund on top, which is super slick and pretty awesome. We also released the 556 uh, shingle, which some of you all saw back when we uh, released the AC1, this little guy right here. So we dropped two new products in one day, plus did a 20% off sale, and we also released over 3,400 AC Unos on our website. So let's go over some of the story of what's going on. So at T-Rex Arms, we're a 71, 72 person operation here located in Mill, Tennessee. And there's a number of products that we outsource to other companies just because we don't have the capability of producing high-end metal parts. Um, Arasaka produces our light bar, a product that I designed a couple years ago, and we can't make that kind of thing, so they go and make that for us. Uh, there's a bunch of nylon products, the Slang, Dump Pouch, Med One, Coyote Tactical down in Miami. He makes the Orion belt for us. There's just a lot of products that we outsource to other companies. We QC them in-house. We design them based on you know what we're looking for in a product. And then we offer all the warranty, customer service, shipping. Some of you all have experienced same-day shipping, really fast shipping. And we get that out to everyone. Well, the AC1 was a product that we could not make in enough quantity based on the demand. So we've been shopping around for the past, last year, it was, it was months, shopping around for a vendor that could produce for us thousands of plate carriers every month, because that's what we needed. In order to keep up with the demand of 2020, uh, COVID demand, and even prior, uh, we were needing thousands of plate carriers every month, and we were not getting those from any other vendor that we'd worked with in the past. So in our research and looking around, there was a vendor that was uh, presented to us by one of our uh, friends, one of our associates that we work with uh, with another company. And we talked to this guy and he said, yep, we can totally make the quantity that you're asking for, which is a lot. And we came to find out later is military contract level quantity that companies will literally fight over. And we actually had another company try to jump in and try to fight us over it, which is kind of funny. But anyway, different story. So we moved forward with this guy. We did our background checks. We looked into his company, his locations, all that good stuff. Uh, we got very compliant certificates. And uh, actually, we'll get all into this in a second. And we moved forward. Uh, our, our deadline for releasing the AC1 was Black Friday of last year. Uh, we came in about one week late. We didn't have enough to launch. Uh, we needed over 1,000 to launch, which is what we ended up launching with. It was like 1,100, something like that, a uh, week after early December. Uh, then it was like a week or two later, we uh, put up another like 1,400. Uh, so we did about 2,500 AC1s in December, and then we were out of stock and we were waiting on the next PO. Well, what ended up happening through a uh, variety of weird circumstances, uh, we started to suspect that some of the AC1s were starting to get manufactured in Mexico, which is not great since we 
asked for a product made in the U.S. We guaranteed a product made in the U.S. We had documentation stating conformity uh, with very compliant parts. We had receipts showing where the material was being purchased from, uh, from American mills and textile manufacturers. That's very compliant. So we had all this documentation signed by the vendor, by the manufacturer. And then we start getting these weird rumblings that, hey, it looks like some of your stuff you know, may be getting made across the border. So at this point, we heard about this. It was uh, sometime in, I want to say end of January, something like that, mid-January. We decided we can't restock any AC1s. If we don't know for 100% sure where these suckers are being made, we're not going to restock on our website. It's not going to happen. So we just we terminated everything, which is why you guys have been asking for months, where's the AC1s? Where's the AC1s? There's no restocks. You guys promised plate carriers in high quantity, you know, that's for sale that we can get, and there's nothing. And I've, trust me, I've wanted to talk about this for so long. Like, We've, we've, we've been going through this investigation you know, process and, and talking to our lawyers and talking to different people and phone calls and meetings and conference calls. And uh, we actually have a, a daily meeting we've been doing now for about two and a half months, two months. Uh, it's at 11.30 every day uh, where we have the uh, customer service director, Kyle, procurement director, uh, Brian, shipping director, uh, Nora, uh, David, our CFO, my, one of my older brothers, I'm on it occasionally. I'll jump in every once in a while. But they make they have a call every day. Oh, and Jacob, who's the uh, uh, receiving lead, so he gets all the stuff, and he's also running the quality control uh, team as well. Uh, they're on a phone call, and they've been on a phone call every day at 11:30 for about half an hour to do a checkup on it. Where are we at? What's going on? What are we finding? What's the quality control process like? How many more did arrive? Here's the update with this vendor. Uh, so they've been doing that now for like two months, uh, doing this daily thing. So we've been putting a lot of time into trying to figure out what is going on. And then I'm on the other end doing you know, the, the PR stuff and going live, and you guys are constantly asking about AC1s, which I absolutely appreciate. You all are interested in buying a plate carrier product from us. That's totally awesome. It's just really sucked not being able to provide that to you guys. But now we can talk about it, and it's awesome. So what had basically happened, we did our investigation. Uh, we started getting paperwork, getting all of our stuff together, tracking how far some of the stuff was getting produced, who was producing it, you know, how all that works, import, export, all that good stuff. And uh, we basically have all this documentation. We'll put that over there. So we have from different vendors who manufacture material. Hey, this is very compliant. You know, here's how we make it. Here's where we make it. Uh, here's Velcro right here. So the vendor, this is all the like Velcro, their receipts. Because we have to get receipts from our vendor to you know, ensure where the stuff's coming from. Uh, we got a bunch of uh, invoice history stuff with another vendor. Here's an actual, what actually happened later on. So we, we started having some sus suspicions. And then it was like a month later, we were actually QCing a bunch of product. And we started finding these really interesting tearaway labels on the insides of plate bags that literally said, uh, made in Mexico. Well, at which point we know something's going on for sure and we need to figure out how many it is, how long it's been going on for, uh, did it occur to the first batch of AC1s we've already sold, and what are we going to do about it? So there's a tearaway tag that people make for this exact thing where you literally sew it onto a seam and you can just tear it right out and you have no idea that it even was there to begin with. Pretty crazy, right? So that goes over there. We got some other purchasing stuff, and we've obviously redacted, you know, who and what and all that. But there's money, money, stuff, locations, uh, country of origin. Uh, here we go. Here's about six thousand dollars of stuff. Uh, we have shipping stuff, FedEx, where it came from. Uh, another vendor, a certificate of conformity saying that it is very compliant, made in the U.S. All that good stuff by the vendor we originally worked with. Um, and more stuff and more things, more things trackings. And then over here we have some of our maps of the different facilities that our vendor actually subbed the work out to and all this data was part of the investigation. Uh, but basically what ended up happening is the vendor that we um, started purchasing AC1s with uh, from the beginning uh, after the first batch, then went and subbed work out to other smaller shops in the area. And this is in the southern part of California. And then one of those shops ended up taking it across the border, probably to their cousin's facility, whatever, uh, in Mexico, who you know is a textile place that also manufactures gear for a couple other companies, which we found out about along the way. And then they trucked it back across the border to that sub. The sub pulled the labels, put the Made in America T-Rex arms labels in, gave it to the vendor. The vendor then sent it by the pallet to us. So, that's what's been going on the past two and a half, three months with the whole AC1 debacle. And as you guys can probably guess, we've had a lot of meetings. What's the right thing to do? You know, we've made promises to our customers. We have sold, you know, 2,500 AC1s to customers uh, prior to finding all this out. What do we do with those? 
Um, are those made in the U.S.? Um, what are we supposed to do with the 3,000 plus AC Unos or suspect carriers that we have in house? Uh, what do we do with the vendor? How do we prevent this from happening in the future? Uh, how, how many times does this thing happen with other companies? We found out that this is a thing that happens to other companies and in some cases they look the other way. Uh, they have suspicions, but they don't care. As long as they get the product and it's good quality, they don't care where it comes from. They'll still slap Made in USA on it, they'll say on their site Made in USA, and they'll still sell it to you at Made in USA prices. Which frankly, if you know we were getting stuff made overseas, we wouldn't have to sell it at Made in USA prices, we could actually sell it cheaper. That's why you have plate carriers that are you know $100 um, the majority of those aren't being made in the U.S. They're getting made somewhere else. You'll see the company saying, uh, the company will say based in the U.S., um, but they don't specifically say where the plate carrier is made, and that's a clear indication that it's made overseas. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, um, but we want to disclose to you guys when we do have something made, you know, where it is made. Uh, we're not going to do some weird, stupid, fool uh, trickery because that's not honest, that's not integrity, and that's not T-Rex arms. So, with all that said, what I would like to do, because I kind of summed some of this up, I actually want to go into the questions, and I actually want to hear from you guys. Big one right now is, we have a whole video on this if you want to watch that on our website. Um, big question right now is, hey, the website's breaking, falling apart, we're destroying it, you know, because all you guys are hitting it, thousands of people. Uh, the answer is, we got three full-time IT techs who are working on the site, trying to fix it, trying to figure out what's going on. There's a couple different things they're talking about doing a little bit later tonight, but we'll see if that ends up happening. Um, but the interesting part with the website itself is we've had this amount of people hit our site before with the Ready Rig launch and the AC1 launch, and it went without any problems. You know, the newsletter went out within 20 minutes. Um, our site didn't fail with thousands of people hitting it, you know, in the checkout, in the cart, on the page. But for some reason with this launch, things are a little different, uh, especially with the refund rebate thing that we're doing for all the prior AC1 customers. Um, and then there's other stuff going on as well. So they're, they're working on it. Unfortunately, the website is... Um, well, the servers aren't based in Mexico, but the, the servers are having some issues. So it is unfortunate, but they're working on it. So so it won't even load for you. I understand. It, it, it's, it's unfortunate. So let me see. Uh, if you have a pending charge, does it mean you copped one? Most likely, but get with our CS guys. They're hammering through emails. Um, it was actually funny. Right before launch, we were sitting at like five emails in the inbox, zero. And as soon as it went in, it was 100 immediately. People wanting to order on the phone, people wanting to know if their order went through. Um, and it's just been constantly, you know, 100, 200, like every hour. And they're just sitting there going at it. And then uh, we're ordering pizza for everyone and they're working late, which is awesome. So... Lawsuit or settlement time. So uh, I'll just put this out there. We have talked about every strategy there is on the table. The amount of money that we're talking about with this kind of order is in the hundreds, hundreds, thousands of dollars, also into the single digit millions of dollars for this kind of situation. So the answer is yes. We've talked about every single strategy that there is on the table. Um, and that's why we've had dozens and dozens of meetings and talking to our lawyer and trying to figure out uh, you know, the best option. But the goal in all these meetings hasn't been, what is best for T-Rex Arms? What will be most prof profitable for us? Or what will maintain our PR or our brand loyalty or any of that crap? Uh, the, the sentiment has been at every meeting, what did we do for you guys? Because we made a promise at the beginning. We also sold 2,500 AC1s to you guys. And our biggest, our biggest concern, to be perfectly honest, in this whole thing was not how many thousands of products we were sitting on that we might not be able to sell at all. Um, it was what happened with the 2,500 we initially sold. Uh, were any of those made in Mexico? Did we lie to our customers? Uh, you know, not knowingly, obviously. And what do we do about it? And so we talked about that for weeks. Like, what do we do about the 2,500? And what we've done, just so you guys know, uh, based on our investigation and time frames and all that good stuff, um, it does, with high confidence, we can say that those were made in the U.S. Uh, they would not have been able to be made across the border in time with materials going back and forth, you know, pre-cut American-made materials, assembled, brought back labels back to him, then to us in time for Black Friday. The timelines just didn't match up. Uh, but because everyone's jumping in and buying AC Unos for $140 and you guys paid $190 for an AC1, we're just gonna go ahead and refund, rebate uh, everyone down to $140, whether you want a gift card or a $50 refund to your card, or if you just wanna you know, not do it, that's cool if that's what you wanna do, or if you're really unhappy and feel like we've stabbed you in the back by going through this whole process to begin with, you can send your plate carrier back, your AC1 back for a full $190 refund, no problem uh, at all. So that's what we're doing for all the existing customers of the 2,500 AC1s that we did sell early on in December. And uh, 
After that, you know, we're going to move on, get AC1s made in America again, and we're going to go back to selling those at $190 and hopefully have those in the thousands every month because that's still a big deal. The demand has not dropped off at all. Uh, the AC Unos, we put up 3,400, a little over 3,400. Once they're gone, they're gone. We're not restocking. We're not having any more made in Mexico if we can help it. And uh, those will not be coming back. Even though I know the price is very attractive, I'm sure many of you all wouldn't mind paying $140 for a, a cheap plate carrier, you know, made across the border or made in another country. Uh, but at this time, T-Rex Arms is not interested in doing that. We've had conversations in the past, philosophical conversations, like when would we, you know, uh, produce a product overseas and tell people it's made overseas and where it's made and then like sell it in quantity. Uh, that's still an ongoing discussion. There's various opinions. Uh, there's also vendors who are known for doing, selling, you know, making stuff overseas. It's good product, but it's not made in America. Uh, so that's an ongoing conversation here at the company. As of right now, we're trying as much as we can uh, to keep everything made in the U.S. Uh, especially with, you know, with how COVID went down, we all saw that American-made manufacturing uh, was a little stronger than people, you know, trying to rely on stuff made overseas. Plus, there's the whole Suez Canal thing going on right now. We'll see how that affects us, though. I'm sure it'll affect gas prices and stuff like that. But uh, I, my goal is American-made manufacturing uh, as much as we can. So this has been a very big deal and uh, just unfortunate uh, for all parties considered. So, but what it does mean is you guys can score, hopefully, provided you get in there in time, an AC Uno, AC1 at the same quality of an AC1 for $140. And actually, that's a really big question you guys are probably having. Is the AC Uno, because it's made across the border, uh, lesser quality than an AC1? And the answer is no. In fact, of the 15% that we like could really figure out, there were a few that we could, you know, the ones that hadn't made Mexico labels, that we knew for a fact were made in Mexico, uh, they were actually some of the highest quality. Because the reality is, foreign manufacturing in a lot of different industries is actually better than manufacturing here in the States. Clothing is, generally speaking, made better overseas in countries that have been doing it in multi-generational facilities than places here in America, which is sad. That's just how it is, uh, that we can't do some things better than other countries. Uh, we can aspire to, uh, but the fact of the matter is there are some countries, Puerto Rico and other places like that, that can do textiles and clothing and gear uh, better than American places can. So it is an interesting thing to note. In our investigation, though, uh, it looks like only 15% of the total 3,400 AC uh, Unos that we have for sale uh, were actually manufactured, assembled uh, in Mexico, but they were still assembled with the very compliant made in American material, made in American material uh, that was cut uh, at the vendor that we you know, originally went with, and then it was trucked over and got all the way down there and then came all the way back. It's just a whole crazy thing. Like I... You know, we make stuff here and that's just a lot of logistics going like shop to shop to shop to get the parts, cut the parts, give it to them, then they give it to them, then they truck it over and they're using a trucking business from someone else and then it's just, ugh, jeez. This is a movie is what this is. I mean, this is what you got, right? We're going to go full Sicario on everyone. No, it's okay, just kidding. Um, anyway, yeah, we're working on the site. So, uh, do you think any AC Unos were snuck out? Were snuck out by our people, or I'm confused at the question. I mean, you can sneak out as many AC Unos as you want, um, you know, off of our website. <laughs> uh, AC Uno versus AC One. Uh, they're the same. They're ultimately the same carrier. You're just saving a bunch of money getting a product that we can't guarantee was made in the U.S., but it's still American-made parts. What is an AC Uno? Head over to our website. It's the AC One made in potentially Mexico. That's it. That's all it is. Uh, what's up with the new HESCO plates? Yeah, so, oh, we also dropped, I totally forgot, two days ago. This is a crazy week. We're dropping all kinds of products, plus the Aimpoint Pro back on, I think, Monday or Tuesday. Um, but we also have two new plates, which all the specs are on our website. These are the 4800s. These are something like $1,400 each, $2,800 for a set. These are multi-hit level four plates that are quite lightweight. Um, the price, it's expensive, yes. Um, but this is extremely good armor. Um, all the legit high-speed team guys, dudes with lots of budgets, black side budgets, uh, they're running plates like this. Level 4, multi-hit, super lightweight plates. They're not wearing seal armor, contrary to what steel armor companies are telling you, like, oh yeah, seals run this. No, they don't. Um, they're running stuff like this that's like $2,000 a plate. Uh, they get a set of them. They run around with them. Uh, if they take rounds, they can take multiple rounds. They can take some pretty decent calibers. So we are offering the a premium plate, uh, level four lightweight plates, the 4800. Um, I personally run the 40, I have a set of 4800 LVs, which is this plate, but it's a little slimmer for like concealment, stuff like that. 
We just sell the big one because whatever. Uh, then we also have, this is a bit heavier, also level four, the 4601s. Uh, you can go to our website for a, you know all the threat matrix and like what these stop, what these defeat, and what their prices are. I think these are priced at about a grand for both. Uh, or no, 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 I think they're about 1400 1300 something like that. Um, and these are level four, so if you want level four armor, uh, T-Rex Arms now has that. So uh, we now have extra plate offerings, uh, but we're also offering L210s 20% off for the next week. I just totally dated the video, but that's fine. So, questions. Um, if anyone has ordered a ball cap. Yeah, the ball cap is made in Vietnam. That is correct. Because <clears throat> there are some products where it's just, that's just how it's going to be. But we've stated from the beginning where it's made. There's no, like, hiding. Oh, no, it's not made in Vietnam. No, it's made in Vietnam. It literally says on the website. We tell people. So. Are you, shipping, are you shipping sombrero with the Uno? No, we're not. Although we did talk about wearing sombreros for a little bit of it, and no, we didn't. Um, sell the, uh, the Mexican made plate carriers for less. That's what we're doing, $140. It's $50 less than the uh, AC1s. Yep, already doing it. Um, let's see. Website is down, but stock keeps increasing. Some people are getting in there and are able to order. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a matter of trying the website multiple times, but there are some people that are able to get carriers um, are able to secure them. So this is what happens when thousands of people hit your website and going off of past experience, the website was fine, but then something else changes and then it doesn't. Don't know why. Um, I wish there was a chest rig restock. So the issue with the chest rig, so we're trying to be as transparent as we can with all these different products. And obviously with this one, we couldn't right when we found out what was going on because we didn't know exactly what was going on. Plus there was a bunch of lawyer stuff. If a lawsuit would occur, that also affects what we can say publicly. So we just couldn't talk about it until now when we actually figured out what was going on. Uh, the ready rig, the biggest issue right now is uh, the getting the right material. Um, elastic comes in a bunch of different types of elastic for whatever reason. Even if you're like ordering the same spec, we've had one vendor in particular send us elastic off of the spec we gave them and it was completely wrong. And we were like, no, this isn't gonna work. And the problem is every time that happens, we have to wait about two months. So right now with elastic, due to COVID and some other uh, nylon manufacturing stuff, uh, elastic is one of the hardest materials to get. And our, uh, we have a vendor who's also working on uh, the AC1. Um, yeah, I recently traveled over there and, uh, a few weeks ago to check them out. Um, they're having issues getting the elastic too. This is a, a major company, a very large company, and they're having issues getting the elastic too. So it's not just T-Rex trying to get elastic. Like This is actually an issue like industry-wide, getting the right elastic for chest rigs, plate carrier cummerbunds, uh, mag pouches, stuff like that. So that's why the ready rigs have not been around is we just haven't had the right material, and that's just how it is. Uh, is it like the LBX LBT? Uh, uh, yes, uh, very similar. Funny you bring them up, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but I already explained the whole situation and the videos on our website. So I'm not going to do it all over again, but like this is investigative stuff uh, for us to come to some conclusions. Do the AC Unos come with taco pouches? No, they do not, although that would have been very funny if we included HSGI uh, stuff. Uh, why did you raise the price of 3810s? I want to say that Hesco on a whole raised the map. I know they did on the L210s. It wouldn't surprise me if they did it on the 3810s. So, uh, do you have any opinion on center access relock? It's a great way of getting a slide in your eyeball. Uh, don't do it. It's stupid. Uh, does the AC1 work with the Haley strategic rig? It does. It absolutely does. Uh, particularly the micro, uh, which I actually just got a couple of. Uh, there, his larger, older one, the D3XCV1R2, whatever it's called, which I have a couple of those as well. They're pretty cool. Uh, those are a size larger than a plate carrier. Uh, those were built as more dedicated chest rigs, so those will not work as well. I should talk about the placard and the shingle since now we're selling those as well. So, shingle is made in the USA, yes, and same with the placard. So the placard, let's get to that. The placard, everything's made in the U.S. unless otherwise stated on our website. I'll just put it that way. We're not going out trying to get stuff made in other countries and not telling you all. That would be very contrary to what T-Rex Arms is. Uh, so this is the Estac uh, Kiwi placard. Um, they've been making a chest rig placard for a long time or plate carrier placard for a long time. We approached them like four months ago and said, hey, we want to do a redesign. We need something for our plate carrier. This is kind of what we're thinking. Uh, their, their current one has Cordura on the front. We asked for Velcro because something that I really like to do when I have a plate carrier, so here is uh, an, an AC1, this is an old one, not an AC Uno, but more or less the same. Ugh. Open up the cummerbund. Oh man, this hand still really hurts. 
What I like about this particular setup right here is if you don't want to run the buckles or you're running something like an MBAV, uh, the, the Cry MBAV does not have good buckle hookups. I mean, they work, but they're not great. You can literally slap the sucker onto your chest, on your plate carrier, and then because it's got Velcro on the front, you can attach your cummerbund literally over on top of the entire Running, for example, your plate carrier is slick. You don't want two buckles because it's printing through your shirt. You can have this loaded up with three mags and literally throw it onto your kit, cummerbund directly on top of it, and you're done. You're good to go. Uh, so basically, the way the placard works, and they're like, uh, Drew, what are they priced at? 65 bucks, 60, something like that. So they're very inexpensive. For what you're getting to hold three mags, very inexpensive. Um, but you actually can remove this entire... Uh, buckle from the rig. Originally, the uh, the STAC version, it didn't have that, but I wanted that capability. I wanted the ability to remove the buckle completely. You literally separate the Kiwi uh, from uh, the inside, basically in the middle of the pouch, and you can then undo the one wrap, pull the buckle off, and then stick the one wrap back down into the pouch. So then it's just this, no buckles. Uh, there's also chest rig hookups on the side, which STAC added for us. And so you can run this as a standard chest rig on your, oh, I better stay right there. Um, not advisable though. Uh, but you can run this like a standard chest rig. I actually have the Haley uh, little harness right here. I don't know if he sells these individually. I'm pretty sure he does. And so it literally just hooks up here on the side with split buckles. Uh, split like female buckles or whatever and then you have the harness that attaches on the front and then you can add your pouches or your other stuff your tourniquets or radio pouches or whatever and then you can have a kydex chest rig with kydex inserts now something that i do on mine is i actually loosen the kydex with a heat gun or you can also use a hair dryer and so my reloads can be a little quicker a little more effective and it's great and we do have a product coming for this pretty soon uh, it is currently being manufactured yes in the usa i really hope people aren't like ah nothing of yours is made there because no it's all like, all made there we got we got duped we got tricked it's april fools we were the ones that got fooled and it's resulted in all this but anyway we do have a product coming soon uh that will be going which is perfect on this particular setup uh, I don't have an exact ETA, but I do want to show you all because it is kind of designed around this and it's designed around the ready rig. It's a very simple Velcroable pouch that literally just sits on top with a zipper. It has two wings here on the side to keep the entire thing from tearing off because that is an issue uh, with pouches that don't have a, what I call a border here on the side. So you can't like actually rip the entire pouch off. So that gives you the ability to put some batteries, Sharpies and or other stuff on the inside. You can then chest rig it, wear it on top of your plate carrier, and have some stuff, and you're good to go. So the placard dropped today, along with all this other stuff. The uh, Velcro pouch will come at another time, another date. Now let's talk about the shingle. The shingle you all saw in the original AC1 video that we published back in December. There were lots of questions. A bunch of little smaller shops went out and made these because it is very simple. Literally all it is, and you can make these yourself quite simple. I'm not... I'm not going to say this is a revolutionary design that, you know, patented. No, it's Velcro with some, it's elastic with some Velcro and some drop loops. That's all this is. Now, why people haven't been making these, at least for this particular application, I'm, I'm not sure, but whatever. Now they will, and that's cool. Um, basically, what this gives me the ability to do is I can take a plate carrier. Uh, you have things. Uh, hand me that one. Hand me the green one. This is actually my... Uh, <clears throat> sort of my heavy rig. I've got my little Kevlar pouch. I also have a Camelback on the back. I was kind of playing with it. But what I can do with this shingle is I attach the shingle to the front here. Triple 5.56 five, mags on the front. This is perfect for an MBAV if you're someone who's issued an MBAV. MBAV cummerbund comes over the top, Velcros to the front. And now, if I'm not running anything in it, I have a super slick profile. But if I all of a sudden I'm like, man, I need to... I need to run some bullets. I need some ammos. I want to chuck a radio in there. Run it. Uh, we'll do outside. It's, it's better if the cummerbund's not in place. I can now run some stuff. So it's great on plate carriers that don't have the buckles. It's great on plate carriers that do have the buckles, but you just don't want to run the buckles. And then it also has two side pouches, which will fit tourniquets and or flashlights and other stuff. 
Super simple, they're 45 bucks on our site, uh, carrying three rifle mags and then two pistol. They will take 545 AK mags. They can take 762 by 39 mags if you really shove them. Um, although I don't necessarily highly recommend it, but I know um, a couple people that have done it. But there we go, shingle just like that. Now, these items are going to be out of stock probably by the end of today, and then it's just gonna be a little bit of time for the uh, S-Tax to come back. They're really good at keeping us stock though, and the shingles as well. But we had them, uh, they've been here, and we just wanted to get them out to you guys. So, back to questions. Now that we've gone over those new products, new plates, AC Uno, all that good stuff. They're working on the website. Yes, everyone's having issues with the website. I'm having issues with the website. Trust me, I don't like it any more than you guys do. In fact, you guys don't like it very much, but I really don't like it because it's my website. You know, I don't like it. Um, some people are able to get through. Yes, um, I'll give you 200 bucks for one. Yeah, I bet AC Unos are going to hit eBay for a lot of money, uh, but I really hope nobody's paying $400 for them. I will say, though, we're flooding the market with over 3,400 AC Unos, so that should help with some of the uh, price on eBay of, like, scalping and stuff, but still, it's pretty wild. But frankly, I'm pretty happy, like, with all this stuff that has happened, which has not been fun, it's not been great, I'm personally really happy that we've been able to get out, let's see, 2,500 and 3,400, that's uh, 5,900, uh, 5,900 plate carriers out to you guys uh, that hold plates, they, they do what was originally intended with the AC1, they hold equipment, um, and they're also coming in at under $200, especially the AC Unos at 140. I am really happy that in a four month process, six months really, but a four month window, we've been able to get out 5,900 plate carriers. We've never been able to do that before. We've never been able to have that quantity ever provided to us or manufactured for us. Granted, under these circumstances, I'm not a big fan of how uh, some of the shady dealings that occur with this manufacturing, but at the end of the day, a bunch did get manufactured. We've had to go through this whole issue and figure out what to do with them. But at the end of the day, our biggest goal here at T-Rex Arms is to provide equipment to you guys. Um, primarily made in the U.S. whenever we can, uh, whenever we're able to. Uh, so the, the fact that we've been able to get out that many plate carriers, I'm super stoked, super happy about that, um, and I'm hoping we can turn that number into 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 uh, before the end of the year. We'll see, though, but we are working on it. It will come back, though. 140 is a good deal. Absolutely it is, yes. So uh, what would you do if TMC gets a hand? TMC copies every single thing that we make. Uh, we actually have gone out and bought copies of our product and stuff has fallen apart off of them immediately. Uh, we bought a copy Med 1 recently and it was not great. So yeah, you can actually go buy copied ready rigs with bad elastic. We've I've seen the photos. Um, bad Med 1s, all kinds of stuff made over in Hong Kong, made in China, and uh, they're not great. But yes, people rip off our products all the time, literally within about two months. Uh, and people also take our footage to sell their crappy products that get made overseas as well little weird cameras and scammed items. They take my videos running like a GoPro, a high-end camera, and they put that in their advertising material. And I'm like, they obviously don't have a lot of morals or integrity to be going out and doing that. And we also can't really threaten them with a lawsuit because these are companies based out of the country. So there's not a lot we can do. It's just how it is. Um, but I guess we're popular enough, people want to steal our stuff. So hey, that's cool. Um, do you ship to France? You can ask customer service that. I, I know we've had to suspend a bunch of European shipping uh, just due to countries being really hard to deal with as far as the shipping and the packaging and all that goes. Um, that's just how it is. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> how, um, all right, I'm trying, I'm trying to see some stuff. I, I'm on AliExpress. I know, that my pictures are on there too. It is what it is. So, War comp restock, not sure, but I did have the privilege of walking Surefire's uh, multiple facilities while I was in California, and they're pumping stuff out. Uh, their suppressor manufacturing is truly impressive. Their muzzle devices are super cool. I saw those getting created, um, and they are, we, we were there basically talking to them about how can we get more stuff. Um, so three of us flew over there. We also got to check out their facilities, have some meetings with them, and um, they're, they're, they're making some stuff. So, but we'll, we'll see uh, how soon they can spool up for more. Yeah, so already talked about the AC Uno situation. You can rewind this live once I'm done, or you can watch the video on our website, which is about eight minutes long and has a really dope shooting montage at the end as well. So, what do the papers say? I've got a mix of what these papers say, where product came from, where the uh, material was made, it's very compliance, con you know, conformity stuff, receipts, maps of where the different facilities and subs are, shipping, uh, tracking data, all kinds of stuff that we were using in our investigation to determine 
you know, how many AC-1s were actually taken across the border to be many assembled in Mexico with American-made parts and what we need to do about this whole situation. So ongoing process investigation we've been doing for about two and a half, almost three months, I want to say, um, to come to this conclusion of launching them greatly discounted on our website for $140 and also offering rebates and refunds to uh, people who bought AC-1s prior. So there's a lot of, lot of money going both ways right now uh, with T-Rex Arms, uh, you guys who've supported us, and also just with product that's getting shipped out for the next two weeks. So what was the April Fools? Uh, the April Fools is very simple. We got fooled. A company that we went into business with at some point in the process decided to sub stuff out to other companies, which we do not approve of. And then one of those subs happened to take the product across the border to get made in another country which is not cool when the labels on your product literally says made in the USA. Um, big problem. So we got fooled by a vendor, but we found out and they have since uh, various loose ends have been terminated and we are done uh, with some of those shady dealings. So. Um, we were the ones that got fooled. You guys are not getting fooled. Um, you guys have the chance to buy L210, 20% off placards, shingles, uh, AC, uh, Unos, if you're down for buying one for 140 bucks and you can get in there and get one. I know the website is being a pain, um, but we're the ones that got fooled in this case for the past three, four months uh, getting fooled by someone we were working with. And this also isn't the first time I've been fooled. I've been fooled by friends, uh, people who stabbed me in the back. Granted, not companies we were working with, um, but people I thought were my friend. Um, so it is a thing that does happen. So we're the fool today in this April Fools. So, but none of the stuff you're seeing is April Fools. It's, it's real. All of it. I need some rain. I need some lychee. Terminated. With extreme prejudice. All right. I got some emphasis on it. Yeah, no, actually, come back here. You're going to be here with me. All right, more questions, more questions. Okay, 762 based products. A 762 shingle would be super cool at some point. Maybe we'll do that, uh, but the magazines will hang off the plate carrier a little bit on the edges, on medium, small size plates, and even larges a little bit. But yeah, I'd like to do it at some point. Plus, a 762 ready rig. <clears throat> uh, new colors for AC1. Yeah, so. Don't know how much I should divulge on this, but some of you all saw a leak on some of the colors. Uh, at some point, I don't know the exact timeline, but there is going to be Multicam Original. There's also going to be Multicam Arid, which I actually have a prototype Multicam Arid one. It's pretty dope. I will be doing more Multicam Arid stuff in the future, just building out some kit and belts and stuff. Um, but then uh, also Black. We re released Black as well today. <clears throat> so a uh, Black AC Unos for 140 bucks. Where's the Uno? It's on our website uh, under Plate Carriers. Uh. So, uh, Cameo and SEAL Team Show. Uh, no, I don't do that. You support the NRA. I'm sorry. Um, why did you make a Multicam Arid placard? Uh, we didn't. I don't believe. Is there a Multicam Arid placard? Oh. Did you show one? I'll go check the back. I mean, I, I, I have one. I don't think it's available, although it's possible right there. Askew, yeah, I know. Uh, it's possible Askew got leaked, uh, but I have no idea when an, a, a uh, arid placard is going to be available. Possibly at some point, though. Once we have enough of the standard colors, that's when we start looking at launching other colors. And I believe right now, of the three colors, correct me if I'm wrong, it's gray, green, coyote, and black. Is there black? I don't, think we have a black? I don't think we have black. So we have the three dominant primary colors. Um, but at some point, yes, I want to get into doing arid, multicam, all those other colors for the placard itself. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yo, I don't have a microphone. What? Oh, I just heard you about to divulge more. Oh, than uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not divulging dates. <laughs> just, you know, things. 762 ready ready. <laughs> Magically appears. <sighs> yes, I know. Um, I'm always listening. Uh, why Kyle. why the L210s on the, Yeah, I know. There's probably three CS people in here. Why L210s on sale? Because we have a bunch of them. We want to get them out to you guys. And why not is the better question. And yes, I do use them from time to time. And a bunch of us here do as well. 
Uh, ready rig drop. I am not sure when that's going to happen. I know we just got a little bit of elastic in uh, a couple weeks ago. That is the right elastic. I talked about this earlier, uh, but I have no updates as far as when that's going to be turned into finished product because the uh, ready rigs right now are being made here in-house by our SO team. Um, but our SO team is also a little smaller than like some of these other companies that hire a lot of people. Um, so we're not able to get out thousands of ready rigs like we frankly need, um, but we are able to make them in small batches. The AC Unos are okay, yes. We QC'd them. They're literally the same spec as the AC Ones. Um, you're getting the same product. It's just doesn't say, uh, and I have the tags ripped off somewhere here. We took the tags off because we can't confirm which of them were made in the USA and which ones were assembled in Mexico. So we just ripped the labels off of all of them. We put all of them on discount. We're telling you guys where they came from, what the story is, and it's up to you guys uh, whether you're good with uh, using a product that does not have a made in USA uh, label in it and uh, just knowing all of this, and if you're down for that and you want to run one anyway. Um, so 140 bucks, but it's an AC1 for $100, $140 is what it is. AC3 win. That's a good question. It's a very good question, actually. But uh, we won't talk about that. So uh, testing L210s, we're at round 60 stop. Yes, I would like to do that, but I want to do it right. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that do reviews, uh, putting plates against like lawn chairs and... Uh, hanging up and uh, not against ballistic gel or not against dummies or stuff. Um, I want to test it right. I don't want to do some test that's not a real test because it's an unrealistic positioning of the armor, um, you know, what the armor is being uh, worn on. I want to show an accurate test, rent a slow-mo camera that's like a thousand frames a second or more and actually do it right, which is why we just haven't done it yet. I don't really want to do it until we can do it right and we can study exactly what the testing needs to show and how we can show it. Um, and then we can get our white lab coats and do all that. So at some point, yes, and HESCO wants to join us for that and be involved, and uh, we'll see when we can do that. So um, let's see, website having issues. Yes, it is. It is having issues. There are thousands of people trying to buy plates, placards, shingles, uh, AC Unos, Aimpoint Pros, which we dropped earlier this week, uh, 4601s, 4800s. There's a lot of people hitting our site right now. Um, but it does, it, it, people are able to squeeze through at times. Um, I did not see your question about GT, no. I'm going to ask again. Uh, only the body armor page is down. I don't know if that's how it works. I believe it's just site outages all over and not necessarily individual pages. So basically, <clears throat> everything should work until you try to check out. Yeah, is, I think this is basically what's going on. It's a lot of checkout page stuff right now. Yeah. But you can go watch the video on the AC Uno page. Uno page is down? For me. Oh, for you. Okay. We turned it off so Drew couldn't lick it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We turned it off during the live. <laughs> uh, the video is down now. No, I don't think the video is down. If you can't get to the page, though, the video is not there. But no, the video is being hosted, and it's on the page. So if you get to the page, the video is there. But again, I've been on a live now for 45 minutes. Anything could have happened between now and, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Just got to keep refreshing. Yeah, and I don't like it, guys. I don't like it. I'm not sitting here, like, joyously, yay, the website is down. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I wish the website was the way it was back when we launched the AC1. When we launched the Ready Rig, it was fine. Uh, we had no issues. Went great. People were able to order. We started shipping. We were able to print all the invoices just fine. Shipping same day. Uh, but this launch in particular, with everything going on, uh, there's just some stuff that uh, didn't work out for some reason. And the IT guys are trying to figure that out. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if you bought an AC1 in December, one of the original, uh, from the original batch that we put up, uh, you will have gotten an email, check your spam folder, or email us if you didn't get it. We are offering a rebate of $50 down to the price of $140, which is what everyone is buying plate carriers for. Um, or you can either get a, uh, yeah, you can get a refund to your card for 50, you can get a gift card for 50, or you can return it for a full 190. If you're just like, eh, I don't trust that this is fully made in the USA, I'm going to send it back. Um, but based on our investigation, like I said earlier, uh, we have high confidence that all of those were made in the USA, so we're not issuing a full recall on all of them. Uh, but we are issuing you a discount down 50 bucks to 140, which matches the price of everyone else buying AC Unos right now, basically AC ones. Um, so you can take that, you can send the whole thing in, or you cannot. It's up to you. Uh, but if you're one of the original customers and you didn't get that email, shoot us a message and we'll get you hooked up. 
Um, but if you guys did get the email, it'll give you the options, the directions, and all that good stuff, and then you can get taken care of. So, law folder availability. Uh, believe it or not, law folders are harder to get than this, uh, than, than you know, AC1s uh, or even AC Unos. Uh, law folders are one of the hardest products to get right now. Um, they have the probably uh, highest, I don't want to say the highest demand, but the, high, the demand to the supply disparity is very high with law folders. We'll get a small batch in, they'll be gone in two minutes. I've been trying to get them. He's been trying to get one. Um, I try to set some aside when they arrive, and I'm generally not able to get enough set aside. Not even for your own. Our, our wait list is like 15 times uh, more than the amount we get at a time, or 20 times more than the amount we get at a time. Uh, we can barely get law folders right now, and we've tried to figure out ways of getting more, and it's just not an option right now. It sucks. Because, yeah, law folders, and the funny thing is, back in the day, law folders were everywhere. You could go buy them for uh, 260 or whatever they cost, no, not a problem, and then all of a sudden, 2020 hit. We had some unrest. We had some vehicle stuff, and I think that made everyone go, I want to make my gun smaller. I want to fold it up in the passenger seat of my car. I want to have it in my bag. And then for some reason, the scales, the sales absolutely skyrocketed for all things law folder. Uh, there's been a couple companies that have come up and made their own to meet the demand. Unfortunately, it, from what it looks like, those do not match the quality uh, that the law folder has. And there's a ripoff law folder, again, they're stealing footage from all kinds of people. Um, that is not a real law folder. Do not trust, I would just say this, do not trust about 99% of sponsored Instagram ads from gun companies. Don't trust about 99% of them. There's like 1% of like legit companies that have actually weaseled their content through that Instagram approves of, but 99% of that crap is fake. It's, it's, you'll see footage stolen from other companies and it's products that are gonna fall apart. And the fake law folder happens to be one of those products. I've talked to some different people about it. I think they, they're both saying it's like 90 bucks, something like that. Um, don't, don't buy that. You're literally putting this in the mechanism of your firearm where you have your buffer tube and you have all your recoil and all this crazy stuff going on. You do not wanna be putting a piece of crap back there. It's a really bad idea for reliability on the weapon that your, you know, your life depends on or the lives of other people. Uh, go buy the actual name brand stuff. So, law folders, if you can find them, get them, uh, but they're really hard to get right now. It's actually kind of amazing. We cannot buy ads on Instagram. Oh, we can't. But other companies that steal our footage can. It's pretty funny. Yeah, so our footage shows up in other people's ads, because but we're not allowed to run ads on Instagram. It's pretty funny. So, all right, a few more questions. Let's, let's, let's do some, uh, wait, what? Okay, let's, let's keep going. More questions, more questions. Is putting a law folder on a 16 inch rifle a good idea? Yeah, yeah, you can fit it in more bags that way. I've got a law, I got law folders on uh, my SPRs, my 13.9 SPRs. Makes them a little easier to put in bags, absolutely. It's not just for um, like small guns. Are we sold out yet? I kind of doubt it. Uh, I mean, we put up 3, 000, over 3,400 uh, AC Unos. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of plate carriers. Um, in talking to, we talked to a couple people during this process and we gave them our, our numbers. You're we like, yeah, this is how many we're trying to have made every month and this is how many we need. And they were like, wow, the level, like the amount you need and the amount you're selling is government military contract sized like labor. Like you're gonna have manufacturing companies fighting over making this for you because it's also a pretty safe uh, manufacturing agreement as far as we need this many thousand every month. Uh, just, just repeat and do this every month and you're gonna give it to us, we're gonna sell it, and then we're gonna get more. Um, it's, it's very similar, the way we're doing POs now with companies like Surefire and other people, uh, we're giving them POs basically and forecasts out for a full year. It's like a contract where we're like, it's this many million dollars, it's this many per month, um, this is what we want. Uh, can you do it? And they're like, yep, we can, and then we should do our signing and paperwork and stuff, and off we go. Uh, it's great, I'm really glad we're able to transition into this way of doing business versus what we did earlier, which was month by month, where we didn't really know exactly how many we would sell, we didn't know exactly how many we would need, and so we're kind of guessing, we're kind of guesstimating, but now that we've had a couple years of data, uh, we can actually go to companies, we can fly out, we can sit down with them, we can tell them, this is how many we're looking for, this is how many we need, can you do it, oh you can't, how many can we expect, it's this many, all right, well what, you know, how soon can we get that, six months, a year, what are we looking at? Um, so, but with that said, it also has been very tough for us to uh, go out and make a product uh, in this amount, you know, of quantity. It'd be much easier if we were only needing 100 a month, you know, 200 a month, um, but we're needing multiple thousand a month uh, in order to actually stay stocked and keep you guys happy, especially during the, the, the rush and the demand for plate carriers right now. It'll probably come down a little bit, 
um, I, I, is my estimate. You know, it's, we need this many right now for six months, and then it can kind of taper down a little bit once everyone's been satisfied with a plate carrier and they use that for a year before they want another one. Um, but we're talking a lot, and it's it makes the job difficult trying to you know find vendors who can make this amount for us. And then some of them decide to bite off more than they can chew and they give it to subs and then those subs take it across the border and then we end up with this. So anyway, hypothetically, but it happens. So um, I understand you is Uno, but what about the rest? Uh, what about the rest? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know. The oh, what about? The, the U stands for Uno. That's what right. What does the NO stand for? Um, one. <laughs> I don't know what the question is, but uh, the AC1 will return, like I said in the video, uh, at its normal $190 price, uh, made in America, uh, once we have all that figured out, have a new vendor, have vendors in place, have all that good stuff, but it will come back, absolutely. Uh, holsters for uh, improvised explosive devices, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> can we get more YouTube videos? Yes, so as you guys have probably guessed, this whole project and process has been eating up a lot of our time to make content. Uh, as far as my time in meetings and trying to figure out what to do, uh, we've only been able to produce like two YouTube videos between now, basically since the AC1 launch in December to now. We just put up a one take, I think it was on a Monday, uh, so I think it was yeah, Monday, we put up an AC, uh, not an AC1, we put up the uh, one take on LPVOs versus magnifiers and red dots. Um, but yes, I am hoping to do more YouTube videos. Uh, we have another big project that we're about to start working on, which will also eat some time for eh, a couple months. Um, but there are a couple uh, videos that I would like to produce. A Escape from Tarkov video, I've been collecting some props and some stuff for that. Uh, we recently acquired a, a number of firearms, a uh, certain kind of firearm that you'll be seeing in some content coming up, and then some other videos as well. But it's time. It's, you know, a few days of prep for a video. It's one day, maybe two days of filming, usually just one. Uh, then it's a week and a half, two weeks of editing. Um, it's a cycle. We have to fit that in with all the other product launches that we're doing, product development that we're doing, meetings that are happening. Um, it's There's just a lot happening here behind the scenes, which I talk about pretty often on my Instagram Lives, on Twitter, uh, my Twitch streams here in the Armory, and then also, of course, our YouTube lives here as well. Um, at the end of the day, what people, what you know, you guys are seeing from us with our marketing is one percent of what is going on. There's another 99 percent that's happening behind the scenes that enables this to happen. Uh, for example, before we started this, we spent I don't know two or three hours setting it up. I spent some time prepping for it. Uh, we already did this shoot right here uh, earlier. Uh, I guess it was last week for the actual uh, AC Uno video. And that was also like a day of prep, uh, a whole night filming that, and then about two or three days editing. So there's a lot that's going on to make a one hour YouTube happen, a 30 minute YouTube video happen, a 15 minute really cool YouTube video happen. There's just a lot that goes on behind the scenes and that's just how it is and that's okay. But uh, I, since I'm one of the principal people in those videos and I've also got to do some of this stuff, gets a little tricky to fit all those in. Um, it's not 2019 right now. It's 2021, but do want to try to put out more videos for you guys. Most likely more one takes because those are pretty easy. Actually, they're the hardest. They're the hardest videos to for me to film or to do, uh, but they're easiest when it comes to ed editing and post production because it's one take. Boom. Huh. So anyway, anyway, yeah, we don't do holsters for an improvised explosive devices. <clears throat> so, a lot of time for April Fool's joke. Uh, this is not a joke. It's all real. Uh, no jokes here. Uh, well, well, we did a joke last year. Claymore holster. Some people thought it was real. Like, no, this is all like, you go to our website, you can save money, you can get things. Provided you can get through the website, of course. Um, it's not a joke. No. <laughs> AC, du AC du Duos? DOS? Is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what it is. Um, no. <laughs> like we said, we're... If we end up taking product, if we end up taking product across the border to get made, you're going to know on the front end. Uh, there's going to be none of this stuff happening. And uh, at this time, we are not planning on taking any product across the border. Um, that's not going to happen uh, unless you guys know about it ahead of time. If you guys don't know about it ahead of time, it's made in the U.S. Yeah, by the um, way, it's not because we hate Mexico, but we're trying to I help, explain that. We're trying to help the American economy. Sure, yeah. American workers. We're, we're focusing on America, all right? There's, there's other times for doing other stuff like that. But no, we're not going to go do that without you all knowing. Um, how is your production value better on your YouTube, better than most Hollywood movies? Uh, that is a great question. Uh, we have two awesome camera guys here. 
uh, who run around with cameras, I will say the majority of their skill is in the actual filmography and running and gunning with a camera. Uh, I've worked around a few different video film guys out there, and a lot of guys can stand still and hold a camera. Everyone can take pictures, uh, but not everyone can get on a camera and run and gun, get cool angles without any choreography. We, chore we do about that much choreography, really. I'll basically tell them, oh, I'll be here, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna shoot that. Uh, just jump in and get stuff. Um, and they just have done it enough. They know where to flow in, in and out of, how to be safe, how to be you know, away from my muzzle. If they get somewhere around my muzzle, then I just have to be careful and go over them. Um, but it's a lot of skill on their part. You know, Their footwork, uh, keeping the camera steady, having a little bit of shaky cam feel is cool, but they're keeping the camera really steady. Um, so that is Charles and Chad. But the answer is yes, our quality is totally awesome. And uh, the quality here as well for a YouTube Live that looks like an interrogation scene in a movie. We could also fire up more smoke, but, you know, we won't do that because we're two minutes away from top of the 530. Am I wearing a sidecar right now? The answer is yes, I am. Uh, for proof, da -da -da -da. I've got, of course, a desert camo for all of this. A Glock 19 TLR7 uh, sidecar is what I wear all the time. And uh, you guys can also pick these up from T-Rex Arms if you can get to the website, which... You, you can right now, some of you, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, you can pick these up, and uh, this is what I carry all the time. I'm sitting here on a stool, no problems whatsoever, extended magazine, and I'm set, and I am good to go. Hope that answers your question. So, how do we play Uno? That is a great question, and unfortunately, I have run out of time. I'm not going to be able to teach you how to play Uno, but what I will leave you with is, if you're running a business and you are trying to provide products to customers, and for whatever reason along the process, something goes awry. You're not able to get material, or a product is taken across the border or to another country without you knowing, or some weirdness starts to happen, and you've already made promises to your customers. You need to be transparent with the people. There's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different things that companies go out there and do. A lot of companies try to hide stuff. They don't want to talk about it because they feel like it's going to damage their reputation or their PR. Maybe they think they can turn a blind eye. Like, I mean, technically, we could have taken these plate curves and sold them. You guys would have never known. Um, but at the end of the day, integrity and transparency is what is going to build the most loyalty with your company and with your brand. Um, don't try to hide stuff under the rug. Like it's, it's not a good business model. Uh, it's also not moral, in my opinion. Um, if you're running a business, this kind of thing is going to happen. They, you're, the mistakes and the problems that are going to occur are going to fluctuate in how big they are, generally depending on the size of your company. But you know, when something like this happens, be transparent with your customers. At a smaller company, uh, reach out to me recently and they said, hey, I've already taken orders from customers. I just got material, it was elastic. It's bad, uh, but I've already taken their money. What do I do? And I said, just send them an email. Tell them what's going on. Uh, offer to give them a refund, offer to help them out. But odds are, by being transparent with them, they're gonna say, hey, it's cool, man. Like, just get us the stuff when you're ready. Uh, don't string them along and try to tell them like, well, this, or oh, this, or oh, I did that. No, just. Be transparent, be open with people, tell them what's going on. Um, we're trying to do that as much as we can with you guys, especially when all the legal stuff is out of the way and there may not be a lawsuit. Um, we just try to tell you guys what's going on with Ready Rig, AC1, whatever other products, prototype rifles, just all kinds of crazy stuff. YouTube videos that get delayed because the camera fries. Um, we just try to tell you guys exactly what's going on as much as we can. And that's what we're always going to do uh, here at T-Rex Arms as an American company. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.